All right, so this has been, this has been like a little hiatus, I think. Uh, yeah, just a little bit of a hiatus. So I did go to Japan and Singapore. I'm literally filming this before the trip though, right after the video of like me re reacting to my what's next for me after Accenture kind of video. Definitely check it out over here. And I literally did not leave the setup. I'm still sitting in the same chair right after I just recorded that. <laughs> So yeah, I did mention in that video that I wanted to talk about what I need to work on and how. I think like a lot of people who watch my videos probably think like, oh, Christine thinks she's all that or like she's telling us all about this information or giving us advice. She must be so perfect or trying to act perfect. I'm like, I'm definitely not. I'm still early in my career. I'm 28. I still got many years to go. So there's still a lot of things I need to work on as well. So I'm going to actually just use this video as a reflection it's still like one fourth through the year, but I still like, actually these were on my list. It's just a matter of like what videos came first when I recorded and what came out. So I have worked on these and I am working on these. So I'm gonna tell you straight up on what I am working on, why specifically and how I'm doing it. So in the case that you're also trying to figure out what you need to do to kind of level up your work career, what you could do, maybe you could take some inspiration, but also share some down below in your comments because I'm really curious about what you're doing to see maybe like I need to add that to my list, you know, but these are just the ones that I've observed that I need to work on personally. But you know, we always have things that we need to work on together. So the first thing is work on personal brand at work. There's two things that come into this. One is that the specifically visibility and actually two of these things that I'm actually gonna talk about later on would help with this, visibility of the work that I'm doing. As a solutions architect or a advertising solutions architect in our role, we are assigned to a book of business and we work with specific clients and there's no other ASAs that are working on them unless it's like a really, really big client or prioritized client. But in my case, like I'm the only one that's working on these particular clients. There's not many that much visibility on the work that I'm doing unless I share it because the only people that really know what I'm doing are like the account managers, the account executives, maybe the engagement managers if they have one uh, and the actual client itself. So there's not much visibility on the actual leadership standpoint. So that point comes into like sharing the wins, sharing what I'm doing. There are people that when I look at my team, there's people that have personal brands that are very strong and I can tell because that's just like the way that they came off from the two years that I've known them. So that's what I say is like personal brand. For me, I think people know me more of my personal side. They're like, oh, she's the crazy cat lady that does cats sitting on the side or she has a YouTube channel or that kind of thing or that she likes to plan all the like the things at work and everything. But I'm not known for my work because I don't talk about my work. So that's like my big thing It's like, I want to talk about my work and then how my work speak for myself. Having a strong work personal brand will help you with your like promotion or your career trajectory or like they want to be the person that they think of when you have a particular project or a particular exciting news to share, that kind of thing. So that I need to work on because before I was focusing on like a Noogler, being a, like a new Googler and everything, learning my things. I think I have a good understanding now with shopping particularly and now I'm like considered the new hotels lead specifically for hotels. So I am like the, the go-to for that one and I kind of am because there's only two people in this particular practice and I'm the one that has like one of the biggest clients actually. But for hotels and for shopping, I want to still grow that personal brand. So I'm still working on that. The next two are kind of things that would actually help with that. But before I move into that, I'm going to talk about the second part of why I need to work on my personal brand at work. Uh, this actually came out because of the the videos or the news that came out. If you want to check out the video here, the Market Watch video that got spun crazy. It's I think it's slowed down, but I still have my mom sending me things that she sees in the news of like what I've done to stay frugal, to save money as someone who works at Google. I don't like the way that they marketed as a Google employee because 95% of the things I did at the point of the video were actually at Accenture. And then everyone who watched it because of the Google name thing, they thought I did everything as a Google employee. Like I organized holiday parties at Accenture and it was like really small, it was like 28 people. I literally took the food home. But like now if you go to Google, that's not considered Googly. Cause like, I didn't do that at Google. What I've done was like, I definitely did try to take food home from like the office at one point, but I, I stopped doing that actually for like about a year or so. So the improving the personal brand at work is to also improve a positive personal brand at work for my work, not just for the things outside. So that was the other thing that came up as well. 
So the next two things are kind of going to basically be the same as like the first one, but they all contribute to it. Take notes of wins. And this is actually something that I've only recently started to do is like in my, and this is kind of sad. Like I, for all the one-on-ones I've had in the past with my managers or my career counselors or my people, it's depending on the names that they changed at Accenture. I never had notes and it's kind of sad because I feel like I should have had notes, but what I end up using is kind of like a therapy session where I tell them like everything that I've worked with or everything that has happened and everything that uh, I'm dealing with. But it doesn't come in a particular order. It doesn't come in any structure. It just kind of talks about like what like literally what's on the top of my head. And because of that, naturally, I will forget about things to talk about. The good thing about with my previous manager at Accenture was that it was the same time, same day, every single time. So I had like a whole thing to remember. And then my manager, my first manager at, at Google, I was able to do the same thing because it was the same day, same time, unless there's like extenuating circumstances. My current manager, we change it all the time depending on our schedule. So it's harder for me to actually have a remember of like, what did we last talk about? When was the last time we talked? What was discussed? What happened during that time? So I actually had to do like a one-on-one doc. This was, fine-tuned from like me putting it in here as well as asking my other coworker on like how does she do this because I wanted to get like feedback and then this also came up as like asking my manager like what would she suggest so I've like really fine-tuned this one-on-one doc that talks about what I need to add in there and then one of the things that I have on here is that like client specifically client work and a lot of times I kind of forget the wins. I only remember the big ones. I don't remember the small ones. So having this one-on-one -on -one doc that kind of builds on like every single meeting I have, it's just like, there's a whole new section. It's not like I completely wipe it or it's completely gone. It's just a doc that act, like works together. It's a really good place to kind of take notes of my wins because sometimes they're like they're small wins, but then when it comes to like a performance, I don't think I don't remember about it or like whenever it comes about sharing the wins I don't remember about it I only remember the big ones of course but like as I see this I'm like wow there's actually a lot of wins I just didn't think that they were wins like that was the imposter syndrome that was the part where I'm like I don't think that this is a win this is a small step towards a win right but to a lot of people they are technically considered wins so that was something that I had to kind of remember like take notes of the wins so the one-on-one -on -one doc really helped but at the same time our team has also been doing this thing where we're supposed to email to our manager like once a week like what are insights or achievements of our client work that we're doing this week um, so that's like something as well that I've even added as my like, expectation at work as well on like our little performance uh, evaluation tool kind of thing so the other one is submit cases at work. So we have this thing called like showcase where you're submitting cases or like specific results or like anything like that that have happened. And this is just to show like, here's the solutions that we've had. Here's the projects that we've had. Here are the, the cases that came out of that particular one. So you're kind of building on, let's say you have like an audit solution. What are all the cases that came along from that particular solution? So it's a way to tie back the work that you've done, but also it's a way to tie back to say like, this is how effective or efficient this particular solution has been. We should work on that or we should kind of deprecate that or all that kind of stuff. So this showcase is like something that I need to submit my more cases at because which will be easier because the second one about taking notes on my wins, like I can have a, a good track of like the progress compared to like thinking about like, what did I do? And I forget a lot of details without digging through all the emails. This way, at least like I can do it in a way where I can like maybe even copy paste a lot of them and then have them all in one area, fine tune it, add the PRs and we're good. Um, so now these are the next two that I, and actually like as I'm thinking about this and looking at these, I have another one I want to add on here. Set one-on-ones in the hotel space. I have done one one-on-one -on -one with a particular person on the product side, but not the product team of my work in hotels. Um, mostly because we actually moved into a whole new office. So if you want to check out the video here, like I did this whole thing where um, we were touring out the new building and everything. So we were all separated to different buildings, two buildings in the Hudson campus, and then there's one building in the Chelsea campus. We, our G-Tech team were all separated to those three buildings. Now we're on the same floor, unheard of. So that means like, I, I did want to prioritize like in-person one-on-ones. And then if not, like if I don't have anyone of that particular role or anyone specific that 
is not in the New York office, then I would do it virtually like over a coffee or something like that. So I definitely want to do one-on-ones. I've done one, which is like the day, the week that we were told to like work from home or go to another office or because we're moving things from one building to the other. So for that, I actually was like in the other one, the Chelsea campus or the Ninth Ave building specifically doing a one-on-one with him. And I found that really rewarding because it's like interesting to see what they actually do because before I know like what my role specifically works with them on and I like what my role does, but I don't know what they actually do. And like with the career trajectory that they have or like learn about about them as a personal person you know or all that kind of fun stuff so that's what I would say is like I need to do more of that I've only done one now that I like moved to the new building I can do more with the people that are actually there it just so happens that the person that I was actually there in Ninth Ave he goes into the office every single day not a lot of people actually go to the office every single day or not even a lot of people even go to the office when it's not required the second one was set up one-on-ones in shopping space so I haven't done this yet mostly because I actually was focused more on the hotel areas because I'm still trying to learn that area. But for shopping, I do want to speak to like some people that I've worked with in a more definite level. And it's actually easier now that because now I actually have them on my floor, I can schedule those. I can hang out with them a lot more. We do events more now. Um, and the other thing is like working with people that are in those surrounding areas. So that's actually the other thing that I want to do is I set up one-on-ones with other people outside of like the direct area that I work with. So maybe the product team, the UX engineers, UX designers. I actually have a few Googler, Rover, um, not Rover, but like the cat sitting clients. And I'm like, what if I did a one-on-one to actually learn about what they do? Because there's some that have like really cool projects and really cool jobs. I just don't know a single thing that they're doing. So yeah, um, that's just something that I was interested in doing. It's just so I can like be a little bit more open-minded about what's out there because I kind of know what is expected, but I don't know what it's actually like and how it's like, is it all rosy tinted glasses? So that way I go, I don't go in blind. Like, yes, I'm very happy with the role that I'm at, but I also still should take advantage of like what I have, the exposure that I have to everyone. And to kind of like, you know, use my career trajectory, like, yes, Maybe I would want to stay at Google for a long time, but do I want to stay in the same role the whole time? I don't know. So the only way to do that is to actually do the research and talk to them. All right, let me know down below which ones you're going to be doing, which ones that you are doing that I don't have on this list. Maybe I should add to my list. Let me know. And see you guys next time. Bye. Oh, the Sora. Let me show you that. Oh, look at my boy. He's so cute. Yeah. All right, that's all for now. See you guys next time.